Welcome to the Gift Up Podcast. Make sure to hit that like button, share the videos, and subscribe. Going to be going through the top five offenses heading into 2020, as well as some notable mentions. At one, I got Tampa Bay. And I know this is a little bit of projection because we haven't seen Brady suit up yet. I get that. But this is the most weapons Brady has ever had. And even that year with Moss in 2007, that was great. That goes in the history books. And no, do I think that there's anybody of Moss's caliber on Tampa? No. I like Mike Evans. He is phenomenal, but he is not Randy Moss. That being said, this situation might even be better for Brady because he has multiple weapons. And I'm excited about it. And even in the draft, you know, they put forth weapons by getting Tyler Johnson by getting a left tackle. They made those investments. It's smart. It's going to make this offense even better. What I think what Brady could do with Evans and Godwin is exciting. And then you throw Gronk into that equation, who's had a year off to rest. He should be ready to go and fresh. And if you're getting Gronk for a full 16, that's going to be ridiculous. I don't see how it's not going to be the number one offense in football. I don't think Brady took a step back. I think everybody that says that is wrong. Yeah, he's 43, but this is a unique situation. Everybody else gets old and tired when they're 40, but Brady, he's able to keep going on. He took care of his body 100%. It's an anomaly. It really is. But it's happening. He wasn't successful. His stats went down in New England last year because he had no one to throw to over six foot. Some, you know, you wonder about the people that are most hated in sports. People hate Tom Brady. It's crazy, but I can't believe the amount of hate that I see towards him. But that being said, let's move on to number two, the Chiefs. And I think it would be disrespectful to have the Chiefs any lower. Mahomes is absolutely ridiculous. I, I can't imagine what he's going to do this year healthy without having to play on that bad ankle. And Jesus, look at how good he did with that ankle. It was impressive, man, to win a Super Bowl hobbled like that, to make choice reads. To, I mean, seriously, he was able to make the best options out of every play. It was, it was extremely impressive. But then on top of how good Mahomes is, all these weapons, it just goes without saying, Tyree Kill, who's a top three receiver in football, in my opinion, Travis Kelsey, best tight end in football, Sammy Watkins, Nicole Hardman, that's ridiculous. Next up, the Saints. Despite Drew Brees and what I think may or may not happen as far as his age, which I think, unfortunately for Brees, it's coming to an end here, and it's a tough pill to swallow for a lot of people. But this offense is talent-stocked. One of the best O-lines in football the best wide receiving duo in football with Michael Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders, one of the best running back combinations in football with Elvin Kamara and Latavius Murray. It doesn't really get much better than that. And even if Brees were to get hurt or he can't get it done, I'm excited to see what Winston can do. And I guarantee it'll be one of the top offenses either way. Next up, the 49ers. And again, Kyle Shanahan has a lot to do with this, but this O-line is really good. A lot of good blocking up front. Kittle, uh, McGlinchey. Now they got Trent Williams in the building, which is just, that's exciting. You know, you get a top three, top five left tackle in the league to replace Joe Staley, a Hall of Famer in his own right. The running schemes that you get from Kyle Shanahan. They have enough weapons on the outside. Debo Samuel is shaping out to be a true number one threat. They draft Brandon Ayuk, which I'm extremely excited about. So they, I know they got rid of Emmanuel Sanders, and I really would have liked for them to have kept him along too. But at the same time, between Kittle, Ayuk, and Debo, it's good. that's enough. That's enough weapons, and the run game is going to be one of the best in the league. The 49ers offense actually might even be top three. It might even creep into that. That's how good they are. Of course, you can't mention the 49ers without mentioning Jimmy G and being the one thing that could screw all that up. We saw him choke in the Super Bowl. We've seen Jimmy G have problems when the run game isn't working, when he has to throw it. Hopefully that they're able to correct that. 
Seattle up next, and this is maybe over projection on my part, but I just see Russell Wilson getting better with his receivers each and every season. And you, I saw DK Metcalf get better. And by the end of the season, he was a legit force. Like I almost felt like he was playing like a number one. Tyler Lockett and Russell Wilson have rapport that very few do in this league between a quarterback and a receiver. And then I think about what they could do with this running back group, specifically Chris Carson. Now these guys got to stay healthy, the full 16 and be able to go into the playoffs. They got to be able to do that for the squad for them to be successful. But Chris Carson, I think is going to get even better this year. I think we may see his stats go up a little bit further. And I think Russell Wilson's going to have everything to work with here. I think he's going to have a complete offense or close to a complete offense as he ever has had. I'm really looking forward to this year for Seattle. And next up, after the top five, I got some notable mentions that I think could work their way up. I'm going to give some of these teams the benefit of the doubt too, but we'll see. Bills, I think Buffalo could definitely do it because last year the only thing that the Bills were missing – was a legit number one threat at receiver, which what they got was Stephon Diggs. I think that fills all the holes offensively. The O-line was not the issue. The O-line was playing great. Devin Singletary made plays almost every time he touched the football. Josh Allen makes plays on his own all the time with his feet. Has one of the best arms in football. At times, though, the field got short. They had nobody over six foot to throw to. Now they got that with Stephon Diggs. He's a legit number one outside receiver that will, at the very least, will acquire two, three guys to stay on him at all times. He's that good. And that's going to free up Brown. That's going to free up Beasley. That's going to free up the tight end group. That's going to free up the run game, at the very least. They can't stop everybody. And then, again, Josh Allen, with him being able to run the way he runs, it's pretty threatening the way the Bills can attack you now. The Falcons, I have to mention next, because I feel like if the offensive line is dominant, which it possibly could be, if Lindstrom and McGarry can stay healthy on that right side, this could be one of the best run blocking units in football. Todd Gurley, if his knee can get healthy and run behind this really good O-line, hey, I think it could be really good. Really good. One of the best running games in football if that if what I just said happens. Then Matt Ryan, they get back to comfort levels. We get back to that year with Tony Gonzalez. Remember that? Well, they got Hayden Hurst now to pair with Julio Jones, to pair with Calvin Ridley. And again, these teams are going to have a hard time guarding everybody. And I think Hayden Hurst is going to be able to eat in the middle of the field think Kelvin Ridley is going to be able to do some crossing routes because everyone's going to be focused on Julio. But it all starts with this O-line. Those injuries last year decimated the entire right side. If the Falcons O-line can run block, then this unit is going to be one of the top offenses in football, no doubt about it. Texans, I have to mention, I really like the addition of Brandon Cooks to go with Will Fuller. And I think – about David Johnson, and if he can get back to form catching out of the backfield, Deshaun Watson's going to have a lot of weapons with the, to go with. And Deshaun Watson makes this noteworthy in itself because he's just – he's great. He's extremely good. The way that he's able to buy time, make plays down the field, it, it, and he's fearless in the pocket. You can't teach what he does, and he can make every throw – so really, it's just a matter of these weapons staying healthy. Will Fuller has had injury issues. David Johnson, injury issues. So if these guys can stay healthy, I think the sky's the limit for the Texans' offense. Cowboys, I feel like I have to mention them because excuses are running out for Dak Prescott at this point. I don't think there's more of a complete offense in football now. Uh, I mean, obviously, I mentioned like, the Chiefs in, in Tampa and Saints and all that. I'm not saying that, but they're not great. But what doesn't Dallas have? One of the better O-lines in football from top to bottom. Top three left tackle. Top ten running back in Zeke Elliott. 
top five in some people's books. Three legitimate wide receivers now. Gallup, Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb. This is it. This is it. If Dak cannot get it done this year, then I think you cut ties. But that aside, the talent is there. This offense is ready to go and take flight. Let's see if Dak is the quarterback to do that or not. The Browns, you got to mention them. You got to mention them. Now they got Case Keenum in the building. So Baker Mayfield better put up or shut up. That being said, this is one of the best talent stacked offenses in football. Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb. It doesn't really get much better than that. So, and you know, they invest in the O-line in the draft. So now it really is on Baker. If he can't get it done, Case Keenum's going to have to come in there and make the most out of this offense if Baker can't, plain and simple. Then I want to mention some notable ones on top of that, but ones that are kind of on the outside and really iffy. The Eagles, I think, could have easily a top five passing unit, but there's been so many injuries. I don't, I can't bank on it but I think it's worth mentioning because their receiving core is actually extremely good if they're all healthy. It's extremely good. Top five unit in football. But Elshon Jeffrey's got to stay healthy. Djax has got to stay healthy. Even Jalen Rieger, their draft pick, was hurt coming out of college. He's got to be healthy. Zach Ertz was played banged up last year. So that's a big if. That's a big if. But if they are, I think Carson Wentz can get it done from the quarterback position. It's just a matter of health. And Detroit, I think we got to treat Detroit a little bit differently this year. I think they've gotten a little bit better defensively, but I'm really looking at this offense and looking at Stafford. I'm excited about Galladay. I'm excited about Marvin Jones. I'm also excited about the tight end group and TJ Hawkinson taking that next step. But what I really want to see is what DeAndre Swift is going to look like in this offense. Because to me, he's the total package at running back coming out this year. Don't let the size fool you with DeAndre Swift. He can run up the middle as a power back, but at the same time, cut it to the outside. Be a legit passing threat out of the backfield. And that's where I'm excited. The fact that he could be that third option for Matt Stafford or fourth option if Hawkinson comes along it'll make it overwhelming for defenses. And I do believe in Matt Stafford. I think he is a good decision maker. I think he hangs in the pocket. He's tough, has a great arm, has not been dealt the best of hands. But I think finally it may be overwhelming for teams and he may have enough weapons where he can feel, you know, feel comfortable, not feel like all the pressure's on him. So I think we got to look out for Detroit this year as a possible wild card team that could make some noise. With that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.